Welcome to World Math School. My name is Mario Raviglione and I am the director of the Stock TV department at the World Health Organization in uh, Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, in this micro lecture, I'm going to talk about the global dimension of tuberculosis, burden, strategy, and progress. Um, I will do exactly the following, telling you about the burden of tuberculosis, of the association between TB and HIV, and on the issue of uh, multi-drug resistant TB. I will talk about the strategy and the targets that we are uh, following. And finally, I will talk about very briefly about the impact of the interventions that have been implemented so far and the progress in control and care of this disease. So first, the burden of tuberculosis. This slide is uh, the one that I always use to uh, express the burden of TB. As you see over there, uh, there are, we estimate, some 8.7 million new cases of tuberculosis every year. There are about 1.4 million deaths caused by tuberculosis every year, which makes TB the uh, very, very much the first or second lead cause of infectious uh, 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 disease uh, mortality in the world. In the second row, you see the uh, importance of the form of tuberculosis that is associated with HIV, with AIDS, which is about 1.1 million or 13% of the 8.7 million estimated cases in the world. So something remarkable, especially in the African continent. Uh, it causes also uh, 430,000 deaths every year out of the 1.4 million total deaths. In the last row, you, should, you see the importance of multidrug resistant TB. So what you have there is a prevalence number, meaning the number of cases that are uh, uh, present on a daily basis, if you like, in the world, that are more than half a million, 630,000 in fact. And many of those, the vast majority of those, are not detected and most likely lethal. So it means that if you don't detect this disease, this multidrug resistant form, and you don't treat it in a certain way, then the risk of dying is extremely high. In uh, this slide, you have an idea, a more precise idea, of the incidence of tuberculosis country by country. And you see in dark blue the uh, countries in the world that have more than uh, uh, 300 cases per 100,000 population. In some parts of Africa, let's say South Africa, or the southern corn, like uh, Botswana, Swaziland, Lesotho, the rate is so high as to reach 1%, meaning 1,000 per 100,000. In, uh, for instance, Western Europe is normally in the range of 5 to 10, 15 cases per 100,000. In Asia, the rates are, as you see, they are intermediary, so between 50 and uh, 150, for instance, per 100,000. But once you have in India something which is in the range of 150 to 300, uh, per 100,000, then you have an absolute number due to the population of India, which is extremely high. Intermediate levels of incidence are in Latin America and in the Eastern Mediterranean region, which is North Africa and down to the, so to the Arabian Peninsula uh, until Afghanistan, essentially. The highest rates overall, therefore, are in Africa and they are linked with HIV infection, while the majority of cases, though, about 60%, are in fact in uh, Asia. And uh, you can see that in the little pie that is present in this slide, where Southeast Asia, which is India, Indonesia, etc., is 40%, and the Western Pacific region, which is China and the Philippines and so on, is another 19%. The rest of the world is uh, as illustrated. Africa, for instance, a quarter of all cases in the world. This one gives you the idea now of the uh, trends, both in the number of cases, the incidence, I should say, and the mortality due to tuberculosis between 1990 and 2011, so the latest year for which we have a full set of estimates. The incidence of TB, as you see, peaked after a major increase in the 1990s that was due largely to the African epidemic, peaked in the early 2000s to start a fairly slow decline afterward. And you see at the bottom, on the left side, the HIV positive cases in red, which show also that there was a peak in the early 2000s. In fact, this is what determined the peak, the fact that the HIV 
and connect the TB epidemic really got to the, uh, uh, to the peak around the early 2000s. In, in terms of mortality, what you see there is that the peak also was reached around 2000, after which then there was a decline, both in the HIV negative cases and in the HIV positive TB cases. The, the, the mortality is coming down, and it's coming down at a higher rate if, uh, if compared to, for instance, uh, uh, the incidence, the number of cases. Um, TB HIV co-infection, I want to spend some uh, time to explain to you the importance of this uh, uh, connection between TB and HIV. 80% of the TB cases connected with HIV, associated with HIV, are in Africa. And what you see on the graph on the right, on the top, you have some example of some countries that have reached a very high level from relatively low level before the HIV epidemic, so in, let's say in the early 90s, uh, you have the example of Tanzania, Malawi, Botswana, Kenya, uh, uh, and Lesotho. While you see then, after the peak in the early 2000s, they started coming down. And as a consequence, at the bottom graph, you see the overall continent there, the entire continent, as that, as I said, peaked in the early 2000s to then start a decline in the number of cases, which is actually quite good. Now, TB, uh, has to be uh, uh, reminded to everyone, is the leading cause of death in people living with HIV. One quarter, in fact, uh, of people living with HIV, HIV worldwide die due to tuberculosis. It is uh, obviously a very important cause of disease. In fact, a person with HIV that is infected with tuberculosis latently infected, so not having the disease, has a chance which is up to 40 times more than the non-HIV infected person to develop active tuberculosis. Untreated, it leads to death, that is clear, and as I said already, 80% of the cases are in Africa, and then another 9 to 10% are in India. Um, let's talk a minute about multidrug resistant tuberculosis. MDR-TB is defined as resistance, as tuberculosis that is resistant to the two most important drugs used in the treatment of TB, i.e. isoniazid and rifampin. When you have this condition, this situation, you call it MDR-TB. We have data now from most countries of the world, as you see, uh, except the white color countries where we never had data uh, uh, so far, uh, all the other countries have been surveyed or are conducting routine surveillance. So what you see there is that the peaks in the world are in the former Soviet Union. There are some parts of the former Soviet Union where more than 18% of all cases of TB are multi-drug resistant. It means that you may face, like for instance in Northwest Russia or in Belarus, you have a case of tuberculosis and you may face uh, the possibility, if you don't do drug susceptibility testing, that this case is multi-drug resistance from, uh, resistant from the start. Uh, one out of three in the case of Belarus will be multi-drug resistant. The situation is less severe in other parts of the world, but in China, for instance, you have about uh, uh, five uh, or six percent of the cases of TB that are multi-drug resistant. Now, if you understand that in China you have uh, uh, more than a million or around a million cases of TB per year, then having five percent or six percent means having 60 or 70,000 cases of multi-drug resistant TB every year. The problem is the vast majority, about 90% or so of these cases are never detected. The reason is that, multi, that uh, drug susceptibility testing is not done systematically. This one shows in absolute terms. Before we saw the percentage, now you see the absolute numbers. And you see essentially that five countries, meaning India, China, the Russian Federation, uh, the Philippines, and Pakistan, uh, and then you can add South Africa, if you like, as a sixth country. But in the top five countries, we have more than 60% of all cases of multidrug resistant tuberculosis in the world. Uh, another uh, scaring part of the tuberculosis story is in this slide, is what is called XDRTB or extensively drug resistant tuberculosis. What does it mean? It means uh, simply that uh, uh, you have a form of tuberculosis now that is fully resistant to the first-line drugs, 
or most of them, and the most important second line drugs, the reserve drugs that we use for MDRTB. So it's a complicated form of MDRTB, is present everywhere we look you know, for it. When you have enough capacity in the laboratory, then you will find this picture. There is XDRTB almost everywhere, except in Africa, but the reason is that Africa, number one, has not used much the second line drugs, and number two, that Africa uh, does not uh, uh, have the capacity in the laboratories to test for this particular form of tuberculosis. And there, there has been, to complicate the matter further, there has been in the past uh, uh, um, uh, one year or so, this uh, story of the TDR, as it was called, totally drug-resistant TB outbreak. As you see, uh, this was in Mumbai, in India, where a few cases were detected that were deemed to be resistant to every drug. In reality, as we say in the paper, in the Emerging Infectious Disease, written by WHO with the CDC, the American CDC, we cannot call it today totally drug resistance because the reliability of the test that uh, detect this form of TB is not uh, full. So we cannot really, in a way, uh, um, you cannot really, in a way, uh, document the presence of TDR. Anyway, it's, uh, it's a matter of very complicated forms of tuberculosis. Uh, let's talk about the strategy and the targets. And when it comes to the targets, let me start with that. There are international control targets for tuberculosis. Uh, they are part of the UN Millennium Development Goals, and they talk about, as you see there, to have halted by 2015 and begun to reverse the incidence. I showed you already that the incidence of tuberculosis is in fact already coming down. But this is a very non-ambitious target because it is coming down very slowly at about 2% per year. The Stop TB Partnership uh, has established then other targets that were to cut, for instance, mortality and prevalence of tuberculosis by 50%, as you see at the bottom there, in 2015 compared to 1990. And then there is this very ambitious target of elimination of tuberculosis from human uh, society by 2050. The strategy that has been used so far to deal with tuberculosis is what we call the Stop TB strategy. The Stop TB strategy was launched by the World Health Organization in, uh, in uh, 2006, uh, building on the DOTS strategy that came from the decade of the 1990s, and it has been then encapsulated, this strategy, into the global plan to Stop TB, which uh, defines the budget. Uh, that is necessary to achieve these results. What you see here is the six components of the strategy. Uh, number one is having the basics of uh, TB control in place, what we call the DOTS strategy, treatment and diagnosis, of course, in place in the proper way. Number two is to address specifically TB, HIV, uh, multidrug resistant TB, and the needs of the poor and the uh, marginalized people that are more vulnerable than others to tuberculosis. The third is to work within the context of the health system. The fourth is to engage in all care providers, not just the public one, but also the private one, which is a real challenge in some parts of the world. The fifth is to work with the communities and empower them, and the sixth is to enable research. Let's come to the last part of my talk, which is the impact of the intervention and the progress so far. These are the impact of the intervention. I mentioned already the incidence and mortality coming down in the last uh, few years um, with uh, you know, other uh, important results. 51 million patients have been cured between 95 and 2011. 20 million lives, we estimate, were saved since 1995 when the World Health Organization introduced the DOTS strategy. And we have said it, the 2015 Millennium Development Goal target is on track. Being on track doesn't mean, however, that this was an ambitious target. I keep repeating that because it means simply that we achieved the peak of the epidemic and now it is coming down, as I say at the bottom, but it's coming down too slowly. And 1.4 million people die of a treatable disease. The MDR TB response has been, has been slow and the gaps in financing persist. Um, another example of an achievement is this collaborative TB HIV intervention whereby the TB program and the AIDS program in countries really work together and we estimate that in, with, with some specific interventions, by the way, and we estimate that cumulatively nearly a million people or 900,000 have been saved, lives have been saved by introducing this intervention. 
So I wanted to conclude uh, with the global uh, report uh, uh, conclusions, uh, the latest global report in 2012 that was uh, put out in October of 2012. So I mentioned already the number of millions of people cured and lives saved. I said that the progress towards international target is evident. I said that the mortality rate from TB has decreased by 41% compared to 1990, and there, are, and there is progress on some of the tb HIV collaborative interventions. But still, there are nearly 9 million cases a year and 1.4 million deaths. The incidence of uh, tuberculosis uh, declines, but is declining, but very slowly. There is more progress on MDR response, and major financing gaps persist. I cannot talk about that because I don't have time. Finally, what are the challenges, therefore, if we want to really target elimination? There are a few challenges that I list here for your consideration. Number one is the funding is not secure. There are still uh, um, lacks uh, in uh, certain countries. The catastrophic expenditure that some patients incur into is uh, dramatic in some parts of the world. They're poorest. These are the poorest people, and you cannot charge them with the costly diagnosis or treatment. Um, we have a, a gap in, the, in terms of the actually notified and reported cases compared to the number that we estimate exists. TBHIV has had an impact in Africa which is dramatic with many cases and many deaths caused by tuberculosis in people living with HIV. Multidrug resistant TB is at a very high level in the former Soviet Union or in the Chinese uh, uh, context. These, uh, the private practitioners, the non-state practitioners, are still unengaged. Communities are often unengaged. In, in many countries, the health systems, the policies, the services are so weak that we cannot really have proper control of TB. There are still social, social and economic uh, factors that maintain tuberculosis in the society. Think about poverty, think about the way of living of people, and so on. And research is just awakening now, after nearly two or three decades of complete uh, uh, in, in incapacity to produce any new tool. We have now, for the first time, a new tool in uh, tuberculosis. Many thanks to all for having listened to this uh, discussion. Thank you.